Welcome to lecture number 38 for ECE 461 control systems, lag compensators. Now the purpose of a lag compensator is to increase the DC gain without hurting the overall system response too much. And essentially what a lag compensator does, it's a band-aid. Uh, suppose I've got a system, I want to meet some design requirements, so I've added gain compensation, lead compensation, with those two, I meet all the design requirements. I've got the right overshoot. I've got the right settling time. The only thing I'm missing is the air constant. I need to make the air constant bigger. So the lag compensator is kind of a band-aid. It tries to increase the DC gain without changing the previous design. Uh, what a lag compensator looks like is this. You have a pole and a zero. In this case, the pole is smaller than the zero. What that does is that makes the DC gain 10 times bigger than the high frequency gain. That's good. I want to increase the DC gain, increasing the error constant. The problem with the lag compensator is the phase shift is negative. That's phase lag, hence the name lag compensator. If I add a lag compensator, this negative phase shift is going to push you towards minus one and make the system go unstable. The added gain pushes you towards minus one and makes the system go unstable. So Basically, everything about the lag compensator is bad, except it does make the DC gain 10 times higher. So what you do is you take the frequency that I'm having problems with, where the resonance is. If I stick that frequency way over here to the right, meaning make A one tenth or one one hundredth of that frequency, the gain hasn't been increased much, so that's good. If I place it far enough out, the phase isn't hurt that much, so all that's good. So you'd think in theory, just make A really, really, really small. The problem with that is this is a filter um, that has a zero at A. Think root locus plots. As I close the feedback loop, the pole goes to the zero. If A is at point one, the lag compensator has a settling time of 40 seconds. If A is 0.01, it has a settling time of 400 seconds. Basically, the lag compensator will kick in eventually. Uh, but depending upon where you put the zero, you might have to wait 40 seconds, 400 seconds, 4,000 seconds. Because of that, you want to make A as big as possible so that I have a quick response. But I can't make it so big that I hurt the phase margin and hurt the gain margin. So the rule of thumb as kind of a trade-off is 1 to 3. You pick the zero to be one-third right here, or one-tenth of the resonant frequency. And what that does then is that hurts the phase margin by, I think, 15 degrees or 5 degrees. So essentially what you have to do is you have to design for an extra 15 or 5 degrees phase margin. Add the light compensator, that gets your phase margin back, and you've increased the DC gain. So that's the idea. Um, that's basically just, just what we went, went over. So the design procedure is step one, you pick a design rule. Like, pick the zero to be one-third or one-tenth of the zero db gain frequency, your pick. Step two, you design your lead PI compensator just like you did before, except you design for an extra five degrees phase margin if you're using this one-tenth rule, or extra 16 degree phase margin if you're using the one-third rule. The reason being is then, once you add the lag compensator, this will eat up that 5.1 degree of phase, uh, phase margin, and I'm back with my desired phase margin, or 16 degrees, depending upon what you're using. And here you kind of see the trade-off. If I use that one-tenth rule, the lag compensator will be really slow, but I get a faster system because I only have to design for an extra five degrees phase margin. If I back up on the gain even more, I'll get a slower system, uh, but I have a faster lag compensator. So that's where you get the one-third to one-tenth um, kind of judgment where you put it. I personally put it like one tenth. Once you've added the lag compensator, you determine your zero dB, dB gain frequency, throw the lag compensator in, and everything should be just the way you want. So let's go through a design example. Uh, suppose I have the same plant we had before. Um, this would be like a DC motor. I want to control the position. Design so I've got a 40 degrees phase margin. The solution would be, first assume the rule of thumb you're using, one-third to one-tenth. Let's choose the number one-tenth. I'm going to place the lag zero 
one tenth of my zero dB gain frequency, whatever that is. Next, I find the frequency that gives you a 45 degree phase margin. Uh, the reason being is I want a 40 degree phase margin, and then I design for an extra 5.1 degrees. That'll be due to the lag compensator, giving you a 45 degree phase margin. So you search the J omega axis until I find out what frequency has a phase shift that's 45 degrees away from 180, or minus 134.9. Turns out that frequency is 3.49 readings per second. So what that tells me is, here's my lag compensator. This is the frequency that's too close to minus one. Um, so I've got to keep away from there. So I'm going to pick the lag compensator, so this is one-tenth of that frequency. And by picking to be one-tenth, what I've done is I'm going to drop the phase by 5.1 degrees and do almost nothing to gain. The DC gain now will be 10 times higher. So there's my lag compensator. Once I pick the lag compensator, now find the gain K. I've got G times K. I've got my lag compensator. Find the frequency where the phase shift is minus 140 degrees. And oddly enough, that was 3.498. It's still 3.498 because I designed for an extra 5.1 degree phase margin. Uh, that gives me the desired phase shift. Uh, what I want for your phase margin, I want the gain to be 1 when I'm 40 degrees away from 180. That's a 40 degree phase margin. Or I want the gain to be 1 when I'm at minus 140 degrees. Gain's wrong. So add k. k is whatever it takes to make the gain 1. k is 0.21. So here's my lag compensator. A couple things to note. When I add the lag compensator, the DC gain is 8 times higher than it was with the gain compensator. It should be 10 times higher, but I had to back off on the gain a little bit to give me that extra 5 degree phase margin. So the net result is I improved the DC gain by 8 times. So comparing it, we've been looking at a gain compensator, lead, lead plus gain, and lag. If I take that same system, this is the you know, 3 poles, 1 at 0, minus 5, minus 20. If I design a gain compensator, I'll have a 0 dB gain frequency of 4 radians per second, and kV is 5. Call that the base case. Add a lead compensator. What the lead compensator does is it leaves kV alone, but increases the phase margin. So that gives you less overshoot. Uh, kind of a sidelight that did push up the gain a little bit, increase the, the bandwidth. But the main point behind a lead compensator is to get rid of the overshoot, increase the phase margin. If we go lead plus gain, which is more realistic, which you probably actually would use, I get my, the same phase margin, kind of by definition, but the bandwidth is now three times wider. What that means is the system is now three times faster. Kind of figure if I respond to frequencies that are three times higher in frequency, I'm three times quicker, three times the bandwidth, uh, one third the settling time. In addition, by clicking up the gain, I made the error constant three times bigger. So the lead plus gain kind of gives you the best of all worlds. I get a faster system, better tracking. Uh, generally what you use is a lead compensator. The problem is, suppose my design spec said KV has got to be at least 30. At this point, I am stuck. That's where lead compensator comes in. Lead compensator says, take the previous design, in which case that's actually more like the lead gain compensator. Take the previous design, throw in the lag compensator, and I'll have roughly the same 0 dB gain frequency, but the air constant is now 10 times higher. And kind of notice it's not exactly the same 3 dB gain frequency. This does add a little bit of phase lag, which is bad. And to compensate, I have to back off on the gain, which reduces the corner frequency slightly. But I do get a higher, higher air constant, better tracking. What I didn't show is you can actually combine these. I can do gain plus lead plus lag. The lead compensator affects high frequencies. The lag compensator affects low frequencies. And the two don't conflict. So you can do gain, lead, and lag all in the same system. If I do that, I'll have better tracking, wider bandwidth, um, kind of like everything that you want. Same phase margin. Uh, two comments on the lag compensators, though. My personal opinion is I'm not a real fan of lag, lag compensators. 
it's a band-aid that meets the design requirements but may not be actually useful in practice. If you take the, actually this would be the ramp. I've got a type 1 system, no steady state air for step input, and showing that 0 becomes a times smaller than 0 doesn't show off well. So let's apply a ramp input. If you look at the steady state air for ramp input, the steady state air is a constant. That's your 1 over kV. If I do the gain compensator, the steady state air is right around 0.18. If I have the lag compensator, the steady state air is 8 times smaller. So that's good. But notice there's this really slow pull right there. That's the pull from the lag compensator. I put the 0 at 0.3, which means from a local standpoint, the pull goes to 0. I've got a pull right around 0.3. What that means is 4 over 0 0.3 is about 13. It's going to take about 13 seconds for the improvement due to the lag compensator to take effect. So here I've got a system that's got a two second settling time, but it takes 13 seconds for the lag compensator to kick in. So is that really a two second settling time? Another problem is this works as long as my set point doesn't vary. If this is truly a ramp, and doesn't change, then it will improve. If R varies any way, then the lag compensator basically has no effect. And you can see that from a frequency domain standpoint, or maybe from root locus. If these are the poles of the system, I've got a pole at 0, minus 5, and minus 20. Minus 20 is off the graph. The lag compensator added a pole at 0.03 and a 0 at 0.3. Gain versus frequency is let S go to J omega, and its distance to zeros divided by distance to poles. Over here, this looks like pole zero cancellation, meaning the lag compensator has no effect if the input is at one, two, three ratings per second. The only place the lag compensator has an, an impact is right here at DC. At DC, I'm 10 times closer to the pole than the zero, so DC gain is 10 times higher. Move up to say maybe 0.3 ratings per second, and now the impact of the lag compensator is basically gone. So the lag compensator only works as long as your reference is band limited to about 0.3 or 0.03 ratings per second. And that's pretty limiting. A uh, second complaint I have is the reason we put the pole at 0.035 is on a Bode plot, I plot the x-axis as log frequency. I don't put the pole at s equals zero on, the, on a Bode plot because zero is off scale. Zero is at minus infinity when I take the logarithm. If I look at a root locus plot, however, there's not a huge difference between 0.03 and zero. If instead of putting the pole at 0.03, I put it at zero, that's not gonna affect the root locus that much. It's not gonna affect the gain versus frequency that much. But what I have done is I now have a type two system. A type 2 system has no error for ramp input. So just that little bitty shift right there from 0.03 to 0 is going to make me, in theory, infinitely uh, better. It's no longer a lag compensator. That's now a PI compensator. That's part of the reason I don't like lag compensation. If you want to get better tracking, like if you want to track a step input, uh, make a type 1. If you really want to track a ramp input, make it type 2. So rather than monkeying around with putting a pole at 0.03, just put it at the origin. And now design your compensator. I'll have to add a 0 to pull the root locus left. Um, but I'll no longer have any error for a step or ramp input. So that's my two cents. I'm not a real fan of black compensators. They do exist. They are used. Uh, I'm not real impressed with them. But that's just for completeness. We did cover black compensators in this class. So that's lecture number 38 for ECE 461 control systems, lag compensators. Uh, compensator, I personally don't have a lot of uh, enthusiasm for, but they do exist.